Welcome to the latest from the Ultra Trail World Tour 2016. 12 unique races spread out over five continents. Race 7 of the tour is the Lavaredo Ultra Trail in the Italian Dolomites, which also celebrates its 10th year running. Awaiting the competitors are the spectacular, fast, rocky trails of the Italian course, covering 119 kilometers and an elevation gain of 5,800 meters. Both start and finish line lie in the small town of Cortina d'Ampezzo, which hosted the Winter Olympics in 1956. Though this packed crowd have their sights firmly set on the 1300 competitors, extra attention is given to the global stars like recent Ultra Trail Australia winner Pau Capel and twice runner-up this season Gediminas Grinius. Definite draw cards for the European mainland event. We were lucky enough to hear from Gediminas before the race to see what his focus was on for the remaining 2016 trail season. I'm in love with Cortina because like my trail running just started here in Cortina like two years ago. Uh, as a first time, you know, went to a big international race, which was Ultra Trail Tour race. And I'm kind of proved myself that I can run with uh, elite runners. And from then on, I'm like racing all around the world with the best athletes, and I'm happy with that. This year, I'm particularly looking at UTMB and Grand Radian Union races. Last year, I couldn't finish UTMB and I couldn't finish Diagonal de Feu. So this year, I want to take a revenge. With Grinius of Lithuania throwing down the gauntlet to make amends for previous disappointments, runners from across the globe are showing a range of emotions before the start of this predominantly downhill race. Setting off in front of fans and what seems to be every one of the 700 locals in the early morning, street lights quickly give way to darkness. The pack breaks up quickly with the steep first leg. Striding through the darkness in first place in the men's field to the initial refueling station is British Andy Simons with Sylvain Cor on his heels. Pau Capel is in third but in need of some quick equipment repairs. <laughs> Women's defending champion Rory Bozio of the USA is leading the initial stages but only just as Swiss runner Andrea Huser closes the gap as Bozio refuels. Emerging from the steep, foggy trail is Hooser, who seems to have shaken off the American. Shortly after, the experienced Italian Lisa Borzani looks in good form as they near the second refueling station. The overtaken Bozio looks to be struggling a little on the ascent. Although all smiles, I need to sit down for like 10 minutes. it's soon apparent she's not 100%. Under cover of night, the top 10 athletes play a game of cat and mouse as they approach the halfway marker of the Lavaredo Ultra Trail race. As the sun rises, it becomes clear that the 42-year-old Hooser of Switzerland has indeed held off the defending champion Bozio through the night. Bozio has fallen back several positions, leaving the door open to the local Italian Lisa Borzani for second. Also with an eye on the women's podium is Fernanda Maciel and Cristiana Follador, who are both doing well on the fast descent. With several of this year's top ultra trail runners in his wake, Andy Simons of Britain leaves the final refueling station with 30 kilometers left to the finish line. Though Huza looks certain for the top of the women's podium as she charges up to and out of the pit stop. Huge crowds waiting at the Cortina finish line receive Simons, a triumphant first-time winner of a senior UTWT race in a time of 12 hours 15 minutes. Eight minutes later, the defiant Gediminas Grinius takes second place and Spaniard Javier Dominguez a surprise placing in third. For the women, Andrea Huser's domination for most of the race sees her comfortably take first, 45 minutes in front of second place Faela Uxu of Spain and Fernanda Maciel of Brazil in third.
From the Dolomites in Italy, we turn our attention now to the mountaineering mecca of Switzerland for the Eiger Ultra Trail. The Massif of the Eiger and the famous North Face dominate the rugged terrain, a challenge welcomed by the world's elite competitors, including New Zealand's Fiona Hayweiss. I came over to Europe about four weeks ago and started off with doing the Mozart 100 in Salzburg and then I've had four weeks um, now until, uh, until the Eiger. I don't like to try and focus on, um, on positioning and you know, who I'm up against too much. It's really a great experience for me to be able to come over here and um, compete against the world's best. So. Yeah, I'm just excited about it. Another elite athlete and event ambassador is also excited about the Eiger Ultra. For me, it's something new. I don't have the habit of doing the face of the Nord of the Eiger. I've done it 41 times. Now, I've got the habit of doing it. And tomorrow, it's a little bit of discovering a new terrain for me. On the trail running, you have to go to the limit physically. On the alpinism, Tu vas jamais au limite physiquement parce que tu as besoin toujours du marche pour la sécurité. Et, et ici, ouais, tu, 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 tu vas aller trop vite, tu vas aller trop loin, tu dois arrêter les courses. Et en montagne, que tu vas aller trop loin, tu es mort. Ça, c'est la différence. With safety paramount in all of the Ultra Trail World Tour events, the 600 competitors for the 2016 Eiger Ultra Trail can focus on their race. Warming up before the event is crucial to a good performance, especially with the near freezing early morning start conditions in Grindelwald. With that out of the way, the eager competitors kick off the fourth edition of the 101 km race. During the race, competitors will experience a massive elevation of 6,700 metres through the icy peaks. Swiss-born Diego Pazos is clearly in confident mood as he leads the race ahead of Jordi Gamito of Spain. The Grosser Scheidegg peak in the distance stands at 1,700 metres above sea level, and its icy peak will need to be crossed if runners are to complete the race. The first cliff walk is a fantastic viewing platform for the Massif of the Eiger and doubles as the first refueling station for the ultra competitors. The less ambitious competitors can appreciate the location for what it has to offer. After the cold, mountainous peaks, it's now coming up to the halfway point for the front runners. Temperatures have soared in the descent, which favour the Australian David Byrne and Francesco Kukko of Gram Raid Reunion success. Fast approaching the final refueling point in the women's category is Andrea Huser, showing no signs of fatigue from winning the Lavaredo Ultra Trail in Italy just three weeks prior. Handling the extreme highs and lows of both altitude and temperature throughout the Eiger Ultra the best is an ecstatic Diego Pazzo, winning in 11 hours 39 minutes. Uh, 
Ah, je suis plus qu'heureux, je pense que n'importe qui le serait avec euh, bah, une course pour moi toute parfaite. Euh, J'ai géré, euh, bah, géré comme je l'ai plus ou moins voulu. Il y a des moments c'est plus compliqué que d'autres. Donc euh, oui, oui, ça poussait, bah, évidemment, hein, on est une table de retour, donc il ne faut pas s'attendre à, à gagner euh, sans pousser, des, sans, sans faire d'efforts. Et... Non, sérieusement, euh, bah, j'ai donné tout ce que j'avais envie de c'est vrai que euh, bah, je suis super content. Germany's Matthias Dipacher secures second, while Jordi Gamito of Spain holds off the rest of the field for third. Dominating the women's field in back-to-back -back victory is the sensational Andrea Huser. Aber ich hatte auch eine große Krise ähm, zu kleinen Scheid Deck hoch. Da habe ich dann schon gedacht, ja, wenn ich jetzt noch eine Riesenkrise habe, werde ich vielleicht noch reingeholt. Aber es gibt dann nie mehr die besten Dank Coca-Cola und Schokolade. Half an hour behind Huser ist Catherine Goertz, with Juliette Blanchet taking the final position on the podium. Ultra Trail World Tour's next stop sees runners descend on Europe's tallest mountain for the 170 km test that is the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. Twice winner, American Rory Bozio, knows what it takes to conquer the 10,000 meter elevation race and could very well do it again this year. For me, UTMB is the pinnacle race of um, ultra trail running. I think for me it has everything that I love. Huge mountains, it's, an ama it's a huge challenge obviously to run 170 kilometers, but also the atmosphere here is amazing. You just really feel the energy of you know the racers, the organizers, the supporters. It's a really special atmosphere and I feel like as runners we can harness that energy. Any part of this course you can't go wrong. I mean all of it is just jaw-droppingly beautiful. Bozio isn't the only trail runner drawn to the splendor of the French Alps, as we see the number of competitors filling the streets. All are mentally preparing themselves for the 170 km challenge ahead. Some hopeful of a place on the podium, some of simply reaching the finish line. Greeting them are thousands of spectators for the 2016 UTMB. At Saint-Gervais, frontrunners Fabian Antolinos, followed by Zach Miller and Ludovic Pomeray, are greeted by a party atmosphere and ever-increasing crowd. Slightly further back in the men's race is Gediminas Grinius, who's applying a more considered race strategy, playing the long game. It's no surprise to see Caroline Chavarro and Andrea Husa leading early in the women's field, with both women having won two UTWT events each this year. Starting off from Chamonix, at an altitude of just over a thousand meters, the course traverses through Les Ouches, Saint-Gervais, then Les Contamines, where we now pick up. Elite runners like Caroline Chavero have carefully planned pit stops and aren't idle for long before hitting the trail again, unlike many other competitors needing much longer breaks to cope with the cooler temperature of the night. At the 50 km mark, the American Zach Miller is leading the 170 km trail. The UTMB is the longest race he has ever faced in his running career. Most runners will spend two nights on the mountain to complete the course, and so pit stops are absolutely crucial for preparing the body for what lies ahead. Runners who have made it through the night are now rewarded with stunning views of the French Alps and this incredible trail. Coming up to the 124th kilometre of the race, the Swiss town of Champé-Lac welcomes young American Zach Miller still in the lead. With the competition of Fabian Antolinos and Julian Chorier right on his heels, he has good reason to be wary. 
Soon after, on the descent towards Valocine, Miller's fears are realized. He is first overtaken by Ludovic Pomeray and then Gediminas Grinius, who had been building up momentum in the early stages. The winner of this year's Madeira Island Trail, Miller's ability to keep up the pace wanes while clutching at his thigh. And it's Tim Tollefson who is there to swoop into third position. After an hour and a half ascent to Tête au Vent, the panorama of the Mont Blanc sits majestically 10 kilometres away from the Chamonix finish line. Moments later, it is the Frenchman Ludovic Pomeray who has wrestled first place away from longtime frontrunner Zach Miller and seen off Grinius for the top spoils, while Tim Tollefson completes the podium. In the women's, it's a triumphant Caroline Chavarot of France claiming her third Ultra Trail title of 2016. Second placed Andrea Huser pushed her all the way, and two hours later, Uxu Fraile arrives in third.